is more taxes from the suffering Kenyans. The taxes rose at a time the overall economy has been contracting. In the second quarter of 2022, which is the first era of Kenya Kwanza regime leading into 2023, the economy grew by only 5.2%. In a similar period in 2021, it grew by 11%. The regime resorted to more borrowing, ignoring the warnings that we are in debt distress and at the risk of debt default. Without blinking an eye, the regime went against its promises to reduce borrowing and did the complete opposite. Kenyans responded to this turn of events by trying to steady their businesses, especially the small enterprises. But those efforts were in vain as interest rates rose through, rose through the roof and more taxes hit those businesses. Only the government can now afford to borrow at the astronomical rate of 17% or more from the domestic market. In other words, the government is competing in the private sector in the domestic financial market. The result has been that macro and small businesses are struggling, defaulting, and folding up when the larger private sector is at best stagnating or equally folding up. In the last one year, the proportion of micro and small businesses defaulting on loans has increased by 17%. Today, Six out of ten micro and small businesses are either pay, paying late, paying only a part of, the, of their instalment, or are unable to pay. Inflation is driven by the cost of food and fuel. As long as the government has not resolved the price of food and fuel, the cost of living will not come down. No amount of fertilizer will lower the cost of food <laughs> as long as the cost of fuel is unchecked. Diesel is one of the highest costs in farming. Even if you give the citizen a bag of fertilizer but make it impossible for her or him to plow an acre of land, you have not solved the problem. The shilling taking the, 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 the grains like maize, wheat and rice that we import, uh, the, those commodities have increased by 25%. As the economy has suffered, another grand betrayal of dreams has unfolded silently in the education sector. As a party, we believe that we cannot neglect education no matter the magnitude of the economic challenges uh, that which we, which, uh, we are grappling with. We believe that if we are not to spend just one, if we are to spend just on one thing, it should be education. In one year, Kenya Kwanza has thrown the education sector into a deep financial crisis. In public, Kenya Kwanza administration continues to walk to talk about free education, the reality in our schools and homes across Kenya is that education is no longer free either in primary or secondary schools. Inadequate funding is growing into a full-blown 
crisis in primary and secondary schools. 